was thinking about uh, this principle that I'm going to bring out in the series that I'm doing on uh, raising kings and queens. And of course, we're taking that out of the book of Proverbs. And we're going to be walking through these Proverbs to help the next generation. I mean, I realize <laughs> for this generation, my generation and the one right under me, it may be too late. But for the generations coming up, the young ones, um, this information and these scriptures and these and Torah that's being brought forth can make a difference in the lives of our uh, posterity, in the in the life of our future generation. And so I thought it necessary to do these series. I'm like, let's put it out there. So we've been going over several um, words and concepts so that we can um, while we so that while we read the Bible and we read Torah we'll be looking at certain words and we'll have the right definition in our head because you can have a word and then you don't know what that word means for instance it's like the idea of what is a queen what is a king you know what I mean if you don't know what that means then the study is going to be difficult what is righteous and unrighteous what is Torah? So we've covered all of those um, words, and we just did the, the word sin. You want to go back and look at that? Um, I'll be dealing with that some more. But I wanted to say something, and I didn't want to forget it. <laughs> and I said, you know, what? I'm just gonna make a video right now, and I want to deal with this idea of, of raising our kings and raising queens. I want to deal with the concept um, of a pathway, all right? So like a path, and of course, in, in Hebrew, we've dealt with that word several times, direct, and it means literally a grooving path, um, it, a well-trodden path. The idea is if you're going through like a grass field and you walk through that field the same way over and over and over again, uh, grass is not going to grow down that path uh, and that you should stay on that particular path if you want to get from A to B. So the idea of direct, it's a well uh, uh, grooved path. It's the same idea as if you were carrying like, uh, um, if you were with cattle and say you were you know, feeding cattle at a particular place at a particular time and you took them to this place um, during the winter then they had to go here uh, during the spring and then summer and, and, and you make the loop around back to the springtime and after you do that so many years you, you'll see a path and and so one one of the things that you learn or you should learn or we should teach our children young is the concept that life itself is a path life is a path so the the gift of life that we receive from Yah um, is likened unto a pathway and this path that we are on that we should be following leads to one or two places and of course, the place we want to end up is in the house of Yah forever, right? And um, the place we don't want to end up is in hell with the devil burning in hell in the lake of fire forever. And so we are presented the pathway in the scripture, in the Torah, on how to get where we want to go, right? I mean, that's basic. So do we want to get into the kingdom of Yah and dwell in the house of Yah forever and ever with him or do we want to go to hell with the devil and burn in hell forever and ever and that's a very good starting point <laughs> in understanding the idea of a path is where does it end does it end in the Shamaim or does it end in hell 
and uh, or in the Old Testament, it was called Sheol, but um, it's still hell. So that's that's the idea of a path. All right. So when when we the children of Israel, when when we have children. Our children must be taught at a very, very early age. First of all, you are royalty. That you are not what the rest of the world is calling you or referring to you or don't want you to know. You are actually royalty. And believe it or not, I have had people disagree with me on that. I'm like... Woo, you Hebrews, you, yeah, you Israelites, boy, y'all gonna, some, ooh, I'm not gonna hit the rock. I done come too far, Zion, hit the rock now. Um, But boy, say, man, if you do that, you're gonna make arrogant kids. You're gonna make, you're gonna make self-righteous and smug children. And, and, the, and the reason that I really don't know how to respond to that properly is because I know that anyone that would make that, that would say that as a reaction to me saying we have kings and queens does not understand Hebraically at all what a king is or what our young daughters who eventually should be raised as queens. You don't even know what that means. So no, um, and we'll study that in Proverbs, that teaching our children that they're kings and queens does not make them stuck up or arrogant or stupid or lazy or spoiled or any of that. That is not Hebraic. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out in the proverb that when we raise our children to be royalty, that they become just the opposite, uh, a royal a royal child is not going to be a spoiled child. A royal child knows how to work. A royal child knows how to read and write. A royal child knows how to present themselves but, but be um, in front of other earthly royalties. And I go on and on with that. And so, and so the concept is you got to teach your children and you got to put them on a path of royalty. And then as I mentioned earlier, in on this path of royalty, that there, there's some things that's just below us that we just don't do. It's just because we're kings and we're queens. We are the very um, chosen of Yah. So that's the first thing. We have to tell them that from birth. And we have to also, and I dealt with the word already. The word I want to bring out today is the idea of this path. Every child born to us must know that they were born to be on a path. They're not born to wander like aimlessly or to just just um they were not born random. They they were not they were not just some accident, but that every child born is on a path. So now, Maury, what's important about that? Okay. What's important about being born on, or knowing that you are on a path from birth is that it makes it very difficult for someone to then, when you get older, say, you know, once in our culture, 18 years old, you leave home for the first time and on your own, it makes it difficult for someone that was not raised like you, it makes it difficult for them to pull you off of the path. Why? Because you were raised on a path. So therefore, you're just not going to let anybody show up and pull you off of the righteous path, the path that you were, no, because from birth, you were told you were a king, and kings don't do this, queens don't do this, kings don't do this, kings don't act like this, kings don't say this, kings don't do these particular type of things. And so when the crowd comes, you won't, you won't do it. Now, 
in order to to then uh, well, continue in the right path you gotta have discipline and I think I said this in a previous video that one of our um, the words that we that we use in education is we use the word discipline it is what is what do you want to do what is your discipline and most people will say oh I um, my I'm science or health medicine or whatever uh, you have a discipline now what this world is doing now that I disagree with is that every time a person every time a person seeks to uh, teach a child how to stay on the right path everything in the world comes at them and be like oh no you gotta get your own path. You gotta do your own thing. This ain't about you know. And 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 most of the time, it's it is an attack on the parents. So if the parents are helping uh, a particular child um, achieve a particular goal, the the heathen and and Babylonian system immediately come after the parent, as though the parent is a bad person for trying to keep their child on the right path to accomplish a particular goal to get to a particular place now um probably probably the easiest way to to help israel understand this is, is that we do this in 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 all kind of ways um i noticed that in say like of course one of the biggest things among our culture is sports so um, we tell our children, or you see, you see the kid is good at something, the child is good at something. You say, okay, look, what do you want to do with this? And if they say something like, well, I actually want to run the Olympics one day, then what? What a good parent does is says, first of all, is this child right here real Olympic material? Can they actually do it? And once it is known, like boy this person has potential they can actually make it to the olympics then what you have then what what should happen is you go to someone that made it <laughs> to the olympics and you talk to them and you say look so how'd you get here and then they will begin to explain to you so you start at the goal and you work back toward toward the beginning and it's the same way um say the kid is uh, and then anyway and then that's the path you see now look if you want to get here then this is the path now of course there's going to be some deviation some nuances because every individual every individual is an individual every person is an individual but i think you understand my point is that primarily you're going to have to stick to this particular path all right same way with if you say uh, a person is a musician because um, we're being on music and they're really good and you hear the, a child being able to pick up music at like five or six years old and they can play you you say well what what is the end game if they just want to play and and have fun or whatever that's cool but they say you know what i would like to do this for a living for the rest of my life i would like to be able to play music teach music be around music or whatever i would like to do that and make enough money in life to where I can literally live off of music. All right, so then how do you do it? Then of course you can do the same thing. You you go to a person who's doing it and it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is the most famous in the world, but a person that's living off of their musical talent. And, uh, and I'm not talking about, now I'm not talking about taking the unrighteous paths to success. Like um, deciding, you know, okay, I like music. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, become a whoremonger or a whore. I'm going I'm to dress up like that. I'm going to promote um, everything satanic so that I can get famous overnight. You know, we don't, we don't, I'm not dealing with that right now because that is a pathway, but that's, we'll get to that later. <laughs> that's, a, that's a path. You don't want to go down that path. That's the one that leads to hell. But anyway, you go to a, a person 
maybe who's playing in Carnegie Hall, maybe who, I'm, I'm sorry, who's playing for a, a symphony orchestra or someone who is just, anyway, a professional who have made it, and you say, what'd you do? And they're gonna say, okay, this is, this is how I got here, and this is how most of the people who are in this position that are living, doing music got here, and then you back up and you say, okay, and if I wanna be there, then I need to go on the path. And we can do the same thing with education. You can talk to, if someone says, I want to get a PhD and such and such, the person you should be talking to is not the one that dropped out of high school, even though the person that dropped out of high school might say, hey, go back to school. <laughs> but you should go to someone who has a PhD and you should say, okay, look, you got a, 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 a PhD in, in um, geology or geography or science or whatever. Um, I want to know how to get to that point. And so you you have these paths. And then you go back to your child and say, okay, this is how, if you wanted to do this, then we're going to work with you to help you get to this point. And um, um, so, so therefore the path is important. So as the child, and I'm almost, man, as the child then is put on this path, on this path, righteous path, then it is up to the parents to make sure that the child, quote unquote, and I'm talking about now, I should use age group. I should say from say, you know, as a little child, like a baby, a toddler, until, you know, a young adult, all the parent can do is the best they can to make sure that that child was placed on the right path. Once the child becomes a young adult, and of course, I know that our cultures are a little bit different out here in in the West, but once a once a child is no longer considered a child, he or she is then placed um, in the category of an adult. And at the time of an adult, or if you want to say young adult, they should have had enough teaching and training and uh, enough discipline on the path that when they leave home, they will continue down the path until they make their goal. And what is very disturbing today is how many people attack certain people who have been placed on a particular path and decide I'm gonna stay on this path no matter what. Uh, they, oh my goodness, I mean, there's there's been so many movies, I don't wanna get into that, but there's been recent movies about, you know, a man who had two daughters and we had more than that, but he had two of his youngest daughters and he knew that they could like play tennis. So he, before they were even born, he said, man, I got a pathway for these, for these two children. And um, I think they're gonna be the best in the world, blah, blah, blah. And then it talks about how they were always somebody somewhere who thinks they know more, better, whatever, always trying to interfere. And I could do that with everything and every genre and every, but, that path thing is very important. Now, how important is it when it comes to a king or queen? It is very important because in Israel, we understand that there's only two paths. So the path that we place our children on is a royal path. It's a path of royalty. And again, I will say, I understand that today's day, we don't even really know what true royalty is because royalty is based on what the scripture says royalty is. And the path of righteousness and the path of royalty is laid down in Torah. And it's also in the Proverbs. So, I mean, Proverbs is Torah, but I'm saying it's it's really like grouped together, the, the positive things and the negative things. And we have to teach our children that the reason we are on these paths, the reason is because ultimately our lives have to be given back or presented to our Heavenly Father, Yah, because we will appear before him to give an account of the deeds that were done in our bodies. We have to tell him everything that we've done. We have to present back 
to him that which he invested in us. And that's called the, the day of judgment. So we have several motivators to stay on the right path. The pathway of righteousness is an unpopular path. But it is a path we have to fight to stay on. We have to, we have to look at the path of righteousness. And we have to be honest about the path of righteousness. And then we have to be disciplined enough to stay on the path of righteousness. And that which is righteousness is not um, what you think is righteous or what you feel is righteous. Is what Torah has um, clearly pointed out is righteous. So I just wanted to spend some time just, just with you talking about that. Because we're going to look at how immediately, as soon as our children... A move from being like teenage well really at the age, at teenage years but they're always going to be pressure to pull them off the righteous path but I'm saying when the time comes where we as adults can no longer guide and direct our children um, by like force because they like live in our house or whatever <laughs> uh, then these principles and these teachings must be embedded into their mind and into their heart, into their soul, into their ruach, into their spirit, into their spirit, because the pressure, especially today in this Babylon, to be moved off of the righteous path is, is very, very, very big, large, huge. It's it's more difficult to stay on the righteous path today because of all of the quote unquote advancements in today's world in technology and all that. But nevertheless, we must understand that there is a path now. And of course, the motivator is we teach him going back over it once again, that they are royalty that they're not just any kind of royalty but they are the righteous royalty of the covenant the path has been laid out by Abaya. my job is to help keep you on the path of righteousness when you leave home you're going to be now living a life where everyone is going to be trying to pull you off of the path of righteousness but you by seeing the end game before you even start the journey on your own when you know the end and what you're trying to accomplish at the end, then the end of the path should be the great motivator to keep you on the path. And likewise, in the negative, if the end of the path is where you don't want to be, which is hell, that should be a great motivator to get off the wrong path and get back on the right path. So I hope this emphasis on our path, our righteous path, the path of righteousness, um, help somebody today. And we're going to uh, go a lot deeper with this in the book of Proverbs chapter one. So until then, hallelujah, 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 shalom and support the work of the ark share these videos subscribe to the channel you know all the things that you do when you watch uh youtube and then if you can send some support to help the work so we can continue to put forth these videos that i pray are beneficial and um informative and hopefully um they encourage you one love, Zion. I got to go. Shalom.